Okay. Topic three is on atomic structure. Lesson number one is history of the atomic model. Okay, um, remember an atom is our most basic unit of matter. Oh, so I don't, let me, I think I can go backwards. I thought I had a picture, but I don't. Moving on. All right, so we're going to talk about the development of the atom um, from a historical perspective, where it began, um, and and how we have developed into our most current theories. Um, right now, we embrace something called the wave mechanical model, sometimes referred to as the quantum mechanical model. Um, it is all based on mathematics. So. Um, basically, we have a nucleus, and then around that, we have orbitals where the electrons are contained. And these orbitals, um, you may recall from Chem 1, are um, of different shapes. So we have our S, P, D, and F orbitals, and those have different energy levels, different shapes, ways they can be oriented around the nucleus. A big difference in the wave mechanical model and other models of the atom is we're really looking at it in terms of a three-dimensional aspect rather than just that flat 2D. So when we look at this, we're not just looking at an X and a Y axis, we're also looking at our Z axis and how this is actually taking up space um, and volume. The orbital definition is a probable location of finding an electron with a certain energy in an atom. We good? No. Oh, sorry. I really did not mean to hit that button.
Tracy, am I good? All right, so first up in our historical development, though, we will we'll talk about John Dalton. Um, he created the earliest model of the atom that had evidence. Back in Chem 1, we talked about Democritus. Um, he was one of the first people to suggest the idea. Um, Dalton, though, actually created a, an atomic theory um, based on evidence and research. Um, so our earliest representation is um, the hard sphere model is what it's referred to in a lot of text. Um, sometimes it's called the cannonball model. Sometimes it's called the billiard ball model. Model. It's just to make you realize that he, he did not believe in the exist, or he didn't know about the existence of anything smaller than an atom. We weren't looking at this as there's anything less than. Um, so we he didn't we didn't have evidence to support that there were any type of internal structures. So we just have our atom, and that's all it is. Kind of like a, a ball. It's where hard sphere kind of encompasses, you know, any of the other ball terms you could, analogies you could come up with. Uh, next up was um, a scientist, J.J. Thompson, and he developed what we refer to as the plum pudding model of the atom. Um, he said our electrons and positive charges are sort of just dispersed throughout the atom in um, a random pattern. Um, plum pudding is a, I had to look it up many years ago, and I, my best description is it's like vanilla pudding with raisins in it I don't know not something I would choose for dessert but I think it just points to the fact that it's randomized and it's scattered throughout I prefer the chocolate chip cookie model if I was going to think about it because you know think about it the chocolate chips are sort of randomized and if it's a good cookie they're spread throughout the entire cookie so Dalton it's hard sphere um, no evidence that there were any subatomic particles. Well, then Thompson, he's um, using a cathode ray tube, which we'll discuss on the next slide. Um, and he's able to prove the existence of electrons. One of his students um, is a man named Ernest Rutherford, and he developed what we refer to as the empty space model of the atom or the nuclear model. Um, through his experimentation, he was able to prove that there was a small, dense, positive nucleus. And this is where all the positive charges and the mass of the um, atom was located. And then the rest of the atom was mostly empty space where our electrons were uh, revolving. And so here you can see we have our positive nucleus in the center and then our electrons are just existing outside of this. Um, but Rutherford said we have all of our mass here. Most of the atom is empty space. So most of the universe is empty space. If you think that everything is made of atoms, it's mostly empty space.
Uh, this leads us up to the Bohr model of the atom um, created by Niels Bohr. Um, this is sometimes referred to as the planetary model because really that's what it looks like. It looks like the planet's orbiting the sun. Um, he wanted to explain some of the chemical reactivities that we see with elements, specifically um, the light that we observed. And we didn't understand why if we expose um, hydrogen to energy, it's one color and neon is a different color. Um, but we knew enough about light to know that there are different energy levels of light. So we just wanted to have a way to associate that energy level of light with the energy levels of the electrons that are inside. So he said that, you know, I have my nucleus, which is, you know, same thing that Rutherford said, but there are going to be these fixed energy levels called orbits that are around the nucleus where the electrons are going to travel. Um, and he referred to those as electron shells. Um, many scientists contribute to the wave mechanical model. Um, Erwin Schrodinger is a big driving force behind that, Warner Heisenberg, but there are, we're still developing and uh, learning about the atom and how it behaves and how the subatomic particles are part of that. So our, we, we're not gonna give credit to just one person. So we have our wave mechanical model, also called electron cloud model, also called the quantum mechanical model. Um, and basically the electrons are now traveling in orbitals and we defined those earlier in the slides. Um, an orbital is a probable location of an electron. This is where it's probably at. Um, the reason we had to switch from a fixed path like Bohr had to a probable location is the way that we have to measure things about subatomic particles. Um, we don't look down into an atom and be like, oh, there's the electron. We have to interact with the subatomic particles within the atom in order to make observations about their behavior. If I wanna know things about an electron, I gotta hit it with a photon. Well, when I hit something, it's automatically gonna cause some variation in the way that it is you know, behaving, its location, its energy level, so forth and so on. Um, and so because of that, that's where the probable comes in. We can get really close. Um, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle says we can't possibly know both the speed and velocity and the location of the electron, simply because I have to smack it with other stuff in order to find out where it is to begin with. Um, remember, and like I said, I've already, you've already defined this if you don't wanna write that down again. Um, it's on a former slide, but it's just the place it's likely to be found. Um, this is not the best model of the electron cloud model, but I think it does kind of help us get away from that very fixed planetary Bohr model of the atom. And the Bohr model is still useful in us understanding some concepts about it. And it's easy to write down on paper, which is one of the reasons we still utilize it to explain certain things. Um, but the wave mechanical model is our most current model and the one that we are still developing in 2021. Um, the, now, kind of to recap some of the experiments that got us where we are today, uh, the first of these being the cathode ray experiment. Um, this was performed by Thompson. And he basically took a tube that had a metal disc at each end. 
Um, one of those tubes was the cathode, one was the anode. Um, and he filled this with various types of gases and he attached it to an electrical source. Um, once that happened, they observed what occurred within this vacuum of the cathode ray tube. Um, so the anode is the positive portion and the cathode is the negative one. Um, so basically the results were that we took um, this vacuum, this cathode ray tube, we filled it with various types of gases and then we ran an electric current through it. And we generated a beam of light or a ray of light. And it traveled from our cathode to our anode. So we had this beam. When we took two electrically charged plates, one that was positive and one that was negative, and we placed those on either side of our cathode ray tube, we were able to deflect um, away from our negative and attract to our positive. Because it was attracted to its positive, then we can start to make some conclusions about uh, the charge of the particle that is causing that.
So from this, they were able to conclude that that beam that they were observing was composed of negatively charged particles. Um, they noticed the same result no matter which gas they used, which also led them to understand that these particles were identical. Um, so it didn't vary by element. So this was not something that was an atom. We knew that atoms of hydrogen are different than atoms of argon. But because they behave in the same way, it means that they all contained an identical particle. You can't look at an electron and say, oh, that came from um, iron or no, nope, this electron came from iodine because they're identical to one another. The term electron was later used to discover, um, to describe the negatively charged particles of the atom. Basically it was done through an experiment with electricity. And so the electron is the particle name. Uh, this is just a um, diagram of a cathode ray experiment. Again, this is just to kind of give you some visual interpretation of what we've been talking about. We have our glass tube. Within this, we have created a vacuum. Um, we have put our cathodes and our anode um, to run an electric current from our voltage supply. When we do this, a light beam was generated um, because it is attracted to our positive plate um, and we know the rules of magnetism, opposites attract. We know that these are negatively charged particles. The Goldfull experiment was the um, next round of development for our atomic theory. Uh, this was performed by Ernest Rutherford, who was a student of JJ Thompson's. Um, and he is responsible for our empty space theory of the atom. Uh, basically, what he did is he took a, um, he, he set up his equipment to where he had alpha particles, basically a laser. Alpha particles are a radioactive um, particle that, and we'll learn about those. But, and he took and fired them at a piece of gold foil. Um, then he set up a screen around this in order to be able to measure what happened to those particles as they either, you know, what did they get? pass through? Did they get deflected? Did they get trapped? Um, he was able to measure what happened to them throughout the experiment.
Um, some of the results that we noted as most of the alpha particles went through the full undetected. That means that nothing stood in their way. Um, we know that they're positively charged, so they weren't attracted to anything. They weren't blocked by anything. So from this, we can conclude that our atom is actually mostly empty space. And then secondly, we noticed that a very few of these, not a lot, but a couple of these were actually deflected back towards the source of this, which means that they had to have struck something that would deflect them. Because they're positive particles, we note that they're positive um, would be the only thing that would push them back away because that would repulse. Um, and then, of course, since there were so few of them, we have to conclude that the area that was hit is a very, very small one. Thank you. Okay, I'm assuming you saw the heard the announcement. I did. Sad times. Uh, but we might change the just to kind of depending on the we look at it this afternoon to see what's in the email. Sounds good. Am I good to move forward, Grace? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm trying to. Uh, this is just an example here. We have our particle emitter. Uh, that's the symbol for an alpha particle. It strikes the gold foil. And then we have our detecting screen. And you can see that most of these have gone straight through with no issue, but we did have a couple deflected back. And that's it.